Hello, and welcome back. I'll be making some glass kunai today, here on the Matt Yasa channel. I'm starting off with my secret glass candle technique and then turning on the second stage of my Bravo torch to melt through this 28 millimeter rod. It will be the blade section of this kunai. I'll punty up with this smaller rod, which will also be the handle for the blade. And now the kunai is sometimes featured in video games and sometimes often in animated cartoons, especially one called Naruto. That is personally one of my favorites. They'll use it as a melee weapon or quite often as a throwing weapon. And so I was doing some research and I was kind of surprised that it may not be a Japanese inspired weapon after all. It may in fact be more of a general tool, either a masonry or a gardening tool. It does share some characteristics to a trowel, but instead of being flat and possibly concave like a trowel, it's a little more convex, a little more angular, like a triangle. So that triangular blade shape should increase the durability of the blade. I'll do my best to shape it here. I didn't have a lot of accurate examples to go off of. I had to use more illustrated representations. And so most of them had a thicker, more triangular blade, but it did vary a little bit. However, one common feature that seems to be among all kunai is the looped end. And now I'm not quite sure of the purpose of the loop, maybe to fasten it to yourself to make it easier to carry. Other than that, I was thinking if you had a long pole that would fit inside of the loop, you could pull on it for some extra leverage, a little bit like a shovel. So I flattened the glass and then drooped it down with gravity and heat to make a point. I'll heat both the sides also and start drooping those down to make it more of a triangular blade. And now, even though a normal kunai has sharp sides and a pointed end, I won't be sharpening these ones I'm making here. That would require some cold working tools, which could grind away at the glass without applying heat. Heating the glass will cause it to contract and condense up. And so any edges you have or sharp angles will quickly melt away. So applying heat to mold the glass is a little bit counterproductive as it'll keep melting the edge out. If I go back and forth, it'll kind of squeeze it forward a little bit each time. And so it gets thinner and thinner. So it's not going to be sharp enough to cut paper or anything, but it'll still look pretty cool. It's more of a display or cosplay item especially if you're a fan of Naruto. Speaking of Naruto, my favorite character from that show was one called Kakashi. He was known as the Copy Ninja for he was able to analyze and memorize over a thousand techniques from all of his opponents. But other than that, he's also a teacher. He focuses on teamwork the importance of working together to help defeat difficult challenges. But he also uses what he knows to create his own techniques, which is kind of similar to my glass candle. And if you watch Naruto also, let me know which character is your favorite down in the comment section below. 
We're halfway through the episode. I hope you're enjoying it so far. If so, please make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Thank you. I do plan to do some more ninja-related items in some future episodes. So if you have any suggestions, let me know. And now with the shaping done, I'll just heat up the center a little bit to get any last edges or creases. That way you can see right through it. I'm starting out on the end section right now. I had the blade cooling down in the kiln for a few hours. I could have attached a punty or maybe used the claw grabbers instead of letting it cool down. But I just prefer to use my hands though. I feel like I get more control over the glass. But one thing I don't have much control over is the weather. It's been getting a little bit more hot lately, which means it's warmer in the studio. It's good to take extra precautions against heat exhaustion. You want to drink extra fluids, take breaks more often. But one thing I find that helps me a bit extra is putting a fan underneath my desk to blow cold air from the floor up at me. I do turn on my large ventilation fan whenever I light my torch, which does pull some fresh air through the studio, but it doesn't do much to cool me. And so having that extra fan going really helps. If you're looking for more examples of this loop technique, you should check out episode 74, Skeleton Keys. It's a great technique to make the loops for your pendants. And now, even though this is a basic tool, in the right hands, it could be wielded as a weapon. Don't really find that too strange. There's a lot of other tools that kind of adopt a more negative stereotype like that. You've got the hatchet, a cleaver, the ice pick. I'm pretty sure all of them have been used in a scary movie at some point. When this one is used, it is very often thrown which makes me wonder which way is best to throw it. It doesn't seem very well balanced. The center of mass is mostly in the blade section, while the hoop end may catch a little bit of air, causing a bit of drag, so it might not be great for a spin. But that drag may stabilize the flight for a straight throw, sort of like an arrow. So I might do a straight throw instead of spinning it. But I do know, any way I throw it, it's going to be fun. And now as I'm going in for the last finishing touches, I want to make sure to look at it from every angle. Front, back, sides. The glass may begin to slump as you're heating up different areas, so it'll slowly drift out of alignment. Always want to reheat it up to molten when you go in to align it. You might have enough core heat, but if the surface of the glass is too cold, then it's already solid. So you'll end up stretching it and it gets very cloudy, very unglass like. And so they're out of the kiln. Let's check them out. This green one is the one I was primarily working on in this video. I wrap them with some colored cord to give them a little bit more of a pop. They're looking really good. This one has a much thinner blade. Being transparent, they're very difficult to see. Perfect for a ninja weapon. I not only attached a subscribe to Matt Yasa paper bomb to my favorite one, but I also snuck in a little opal too. And so just in case you find a glass kunai with an opal in the handle, you'll know right away that's the signature weapon of the glass ninja, Matt Yasa.